Hello all, so I'm back in the studio getting started for today's video. So I have a lot of things I want to show you so that you can get ready along with me for the book. So probably where we're going to do this, I'm spraying, I have an orchid in here. So when I first come in, I like to give her a little bit of water. This is one of these, um, you know, it's continuous spray bottles. Miss Patty Tolly Parish sent me a love package and this was in there and I love it because I have it available to spray, especially when I'm moving my inks and stuff along the page, but she's perfect for Miss Orchid. So I'll keep her going. Um, so what we're going to do is kind of get myself together here. <clears throat> Today's video is going to be sort of a compilation. So I'm going to first show all the materials we're going to be using for the book we're going to make. Um, and then I'm going to do segments of different aspects of that project. And then I'll give you guys a couple of weeks to work on it. Like um, next week's video, I'll probably do some gel printing or something like that because I've got some ideas that I want to gel print on some of the pages. Um, so it'll give you a couple of weeks to kind of make the book and um, just kind of catch up, you know see where we are with everything. And we'll be working on and off in the book over the course of the coming year. So it's not going to be every week. It's not going to be doing something in the book. Um, we'll be doing different things. And I'll be showing you things that I've been doing in the book. And so we'll, we're going to take a journey together, but it's going to be kind of free flowing so that when we're done, we have this amazing journal, but it'll have a lot of the things in it that, um, are personal to our own year's journal, but I'll do prompts and stuff like that. So we're going to have fun with it. One of the things that I'm doing is I've made a, um, and the link will be below, but I made a, a um, some printables for February that are the same papers that are in my book. So the printables are these papers. And the reason why I did that is because, first of all, I know you guys like to see what my papers look like close up and since there, there's some good ones in here and they're neutrals i thought they'd be fun things that you could take to um use in your own journals like you know like as neat collage ephemera and stuff like that because i know everybody can't necessarily coffee stain or get some of this staining stuff done all the time you know based on various circumstances so i'm told that a lot so the printables are going to be these um so there'll be like 20 something good pages of printables for sure and one of the things I'm going to do with the printables is I'm going to gel print on them myself. Um, so I kind of want to kind of keep these similar sort of neutral backgrounds. So I know I'll be gel printing on them as well as collaging. So next week, some of the gel prints that I want to do, I'll be doing on the, on the printables. And um, so look for that link below if you um, think you might want to use some of these. So we'll need, um, you'll need your pack of original papers. And uh, if you, if you've come to the video and you didn't get a chance to do your original papers, or you don't have a lot of collage fodder to have done like the mass making, um, or you just didn't have the time, if you get the printables, you can also just kind of spritz them and coffee stain them a little bit and get them a little grunged up. And then you could use those as the pages in the book we're going to make. So there's a lot of ways to approach it. So we're gonna need this paper. The other thing that I'm gonna be using is some, I have Surrey silk and I got mine on <clears throat> Amazon. I'll make sure that the link is below, but it comes, I think it was like $9 and you get a lot of it. So there were four skeins. It was interesting, This there, I ordered white, but I kind of got this little creamy color, which I actually liked, but there's no guarantee that's going to be in there because I think it was just an odd piece that they put in there. So sometimes you'll find some color variations, but what this is, is it's sorry silk. It's an organza and I love this stuff. And this is what we're going to be using for binding the pages. You can see it's very translucent, um, you know, transparent. You can see through it. Um, but it's very, very strong. Now you don't have to purchase this sorry silk. If you don't want to, you can just literally rip up anything you already have cotton. I would do cotton linen or a silk 
but you want to make sure the fabric is good and strong. But you may have an old blouse that you're not wearing any longer and you like the patterns and stuff on it. Or <clears throat> a lot of times we have old linen tablecloths and things like that. Even old bed sheets, for real. You can just strip them. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can just, you know, clip and strip them into about one. Let me see. How thick is this? You can go between. This one is a little over one inch, but you can do like between one and one and a half inches and that'd be perfect for your strips and just strip some of this fabric up so we can use, you can use that and you'll see how I'm going to use it later in the video. And so, okay, so we have my pile here. So that goes there. You're going to need a glue. So you could use a PVA, like, you know, like the white glue or also, you could use um, what's called, Giotto has a nice one, it's called collage, and it's what they call a clear PVA. So um, if you have something like that, I think a glue stick, unless you use a really heavy duty one, like maybe the Giotto or something like that, it might not have the staying power for the book the way you'd like it. So I would probably use a PVA, so either the white or the clear, whatever you have already a white glue of some sort. That's what you want. So we have our glue. We are going to also be sewing. So over here I have my little uh, sewing thing in my, my uh, little box from a bakery in Paris where I had you know, yummy macaroons. Oh, so good, so good. So we want sort of like, I'm gonna look for the needle. You want to use like a, a, an embroidery needle that has like a really, uh, can you see that? Like a really large hole in it. I don't know if you can see that, okay? Because we're going to use also, I'm gonna use this organza to sew my book with. Now, if you don't get organza and you end up with a fabric that's a little thicker, then you can use um, the, if, you're, if you've been with me for a while and you already have waxed thread, sewing threads, you can use those. Um, I think things like embroidery floss, floss might be a little, it, it won't be strong enough. You want something sort of strong. So I'll put a link for some various colors of the embroidery, I mean, of the wax linen threads below, because these are inexpensive and they work really well if you don't have them. But if you're gonna get these, you might as well maybe just go ahead and get the sari silk because um, that's what I'm gonna be using. And so one of these large head embroidery needles are perfect because the little style of book that we're gonna do, it's gonna be, for YouTube um, YouTubers, it's going to be a pamphlet style, meaning we're going to go through once, but it's not going to be a traditional pamphlet. It's going to be a little fancier, so it's going to be fun, and it's really going to harken back to something that's going to look um, old world. So it'll be a fun one. It'll be easy to follow. For those of you who are on Patreon with me, we're going to be doing more of a Western style book, so it's going to be more signatures in it, and you guys have been following me there for a while so you already have some book binding skills and for my patreon followers if you want to do both books you could so it's no big deal but both books are going to be amazing so you know one is not going to be more amazing than the other it's just we're going to be using different skill sets so don't worry if you have never never done book binding you're going to be okay and then the other thing that we're going to be using is right there we're going to be using some canvas cloth so i have these large canvas pieces that i just kind of paint on i do like my scripting on and a lot of times i'm just playing with um paint like this one i just kind of playing with paints and just kind of seeing what certain things we're going to be doing um so this is just kind of a practice one so i'm going to rip this up and this is going to become the cover. So I'm going to be using like a drop cloth, a canvas. This is a canvasy type of fabric. 
um, for my cover. I thought that was going to be a, make a fun, soft kind of color cover, but we're going to reinforce it. So I'll be showing you that process as well. So like I said, this is going to be, I'll just do st steps of every little bit so that you'll have an idea of what I'm doing. Now, um, you can just get a canvas drop cloth. You don't have to go and get expensive canvas. So this is one that came off of um, <laughs> Amazon, <laughs> Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. Um, but you can also go to your local hardware store in the paint section. They carry canvases there. And these things are inexpensive. I mean, my goodness, they're like $7. And you can get a small one, probably 5 or $6. But it'll be like maybe a two by four or maybe no, 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 maybe a four by six, uh, which is still a nice, a, a lot of canvas. And you can paint on them. You can use like the scripting that I'm doing on these. Like this is another one that I was scripting on before I get started on painting it. This is done with permanent marker. So I just use permanent marker and the permanent marker actually works really nicely on, um, on the canvas cloth. So I'll put it a little closer so you can see it. So it really takes a lot of uh, materials and it's not primed. I purposely have not primed this because I didn't want it to be, we're gonna make it stiff, but I didn't want it to be stiff. I wanted to still have this sort of cloth look to it. Now I do have some ideas moving on on how to make waxed canvas looks. So we can kind of get that really old world look to some of um, the fabrics. I'll be playing with that. We'll be doing a lot of that. I'm on Patreon, but I'll definitely show you guys what I'm working on. So I'm gonna work with this one. Okay, so we have canvas, cloth, or anything that you may already have that fits into that category. And let me see. We'll have some more of our scraps because we're gonna be using that on the inside of this canvas. So make sure you have any, um, if you have any extra of your, um, you know, larger pieces we did for mass making, or you can put smaller pieces, it doesn't matter. Whatever's left of what you have, we'll use craft paper and those type of things. Now, this book is going, the amount of pages I have here right now is for, um, obviously a couple of books I'm doing here. The, the multi-signature Patreon one, and then the single signature one that you guys are, we're, we're gonna create here on YouTube. And so what I wanna do is just, I'm not gonna worry about page order right now. I think what I wanna do is just kind of get things all the same length, so, or height. Right here, I'm gonna go ahead and just rip this a bit so that we can kind of want a little bit more uniform pages because we're kind of emulating more of an old world book. So I kind of want straight edges. So what you want to do is just kind of go through and let's just get the height of the pages. You know, I want to design, kind of decide on an absolute maximum size. So a few of these are a little longer than what I want, like these two right here, maybe these three of this. Okay, these two I think are too long. I think the rest of these are fine. So I think the maximum height I'm gonna go for is, let's see what this is, is I'm gonna go for almost 12 inches, but this is like more 11 and three quarters. So roughly mine is gonna be, a, the book when it's finished, I'm sure it's gonna be closer to 12. Um, because once you get the covers and everything on, some are a little taller, a little shorter, but that's okay. All right. So basically get all your pages in order. Okay, so let's start putting pages together. I'm gonna to kind of be random with that. I'm not gonna like really overthink it. So I know this is gonna be an outside spread and this will be 
an inside spread and an outside spread. Okay, so let's get started. I'll show you how we're gonna do this. So pulling our washi tape back out that we made, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna butt these signatures up against each other. I'm gonna just trim this edge down because I don't really want all that overhang. So I need to put these pages together. So you're gonna see. So this page and that one, these two pages are gonna line up. So what we're gonna do is, this is gonna be my outside signatures. I'm gonna tape across the outside signatures because that's where the actual fabric is gonna go. So let me show you. I'm gonna pull some tape off. And really, honestly, it's very, just very simple. You're not gonna do a lot of thinking about it. Just, so we're just really trying to keep the signatures together while we just gonna kind of make sort of random, see? So now that's gonna stay together. So when I go to actually put the fabric strip down, I don't have to worry about my pages separating, but you know, it's also being held together with something that's, you know, kind of cool. I like this. So this will be like that. Um, I don't want page, page. Let's just see. Maybe, maybe these two go together. Okay, that looks good. Alrighty. Grab some more. This stuff is so quick to make. You know, you saw how easy it was. You literally make this and then just store it so you have it. Different projects. Okay. Alrighty. And so this is also going to get wider and a little wider because every time you put one in, it pushes it out more, but I'm okay with that. I feel like that's going to give it the kind of vibe we want. So I'm just kind of putting them one inside the other so you can see. And then, and so I can see too. <laughs> go. So, so we're not, and you know, we, you always want to leave your cover till last because the way I'm doing this, because I still want it to be random, you know, it starts splaying out the more you put in because you don't have but so much of a, a gutter here. So it's going to kind of push things out. Um, so I like to do the cover once I'm done, but I like the randomness of the edges. If you don't like that, you can also cut them all the same, but I, I do like that part of it. Okay. So you can figure out, I'm just using this clip just enough so the whole thing just doesn't unravel and start going crazy. You don't have to, you know, you can iron it if you feel like it'll be less fumbly. And a lot of times I do iron it, so, um, but I haven't for the video, so I'm just going to, so you want to cut it basically the length of your page. You can cut a few of them since our pages are the same height. This, this is stretchy, this organza one, so I do pull it a little bit, um, and if it's a little long, I'd rather it to be longer than the page and then just be able to trim it than to be too short. But if it's too short, you can also come back and just, you know, um, add a little section if you want to. Okay, so I've got a few here. All right, so put this to the side. Now, so, think the way I'm going to do this because it's always like different every time depending on the paper but I have a bit of freezer wrap you can use wax paper or anything like that and that's going to help us with the gluing and I'm going to use the PVA and I'm going to just use a squeeze bottle I think it's going to be easier just to run a bead down on either side And you can use a sponge brush or whatever. I think I'm gonna use my finger just to kind of spread it. 
so that you have enough, a nice amount, and make sure it's going all the way to the edges. That's the important part. So just kind of open this up and starting in one section, just start at the top and just make sure that you kind of get an even amount on either side. You know, like a half, if it's an inch, then a half an inch or, you know. But the main thing is just to really capture the page because this is acting as, a, as a, a big part of our binding process. So you just want to make sure you get, get good adhesion. This is where <laughs> the wax paper the freezer wrap comes in because you can really rub this really good without, you know, disturbing your hinge. So we basically are making these hinges so you can see. And when it dries, it's so strong, but it just also disappears. Like you barely even see this. So I'm gonna let these dry. They're still really wet. You really wanna make sure that they're dry good before you start messing with them at all. You don't want them to kind, you don't want the paper to tear, nor do you want them to start moving apart from themselves. So with that, said I'm going to leave them alone because I'm, I'm likely to mess with them myself. I'm leaving them over here on the floor to dry. And that is that until next week. Okay, so there we have it. Um, we will definitely pick up next week with the covers. So make sure you have your um, drop cloth or some kind of heavy canvas. And we are also going to do the, um, the sewing. So let's be ready. So enjoy hanging out with you guys as always. Thumb up the video if you enjoyed this and also hit that bell. If you're new to my channel, hit all so that you can, um, you know, get all the notifications and hang out with us every week. So love you guys. And until next week, have a lot of fun in your studio and let's get this book done. Bye-bye. Love you guys.